Loss stands for Lifestyles of Health and Sustainability and it is an acronym that represents a psychographic of a consumer that's interested in buying products and services that are in line with their personal values rather than a price point value and it also identifies the market that is about 290 billion dollars that caters to that consumer. So what LOHAS does is it provides the context in which businesses can partnership with each other because they're targeting the same consumer. The yoga company and the organic food company and the hybrid vehicle company are all targeting that LOHAS consumer but they're not talking to each other. So what we do is we provide that context to say, hey, you're working in parallel tracks. Why don't you take off the blinders and work together rather than you know, try to reinvent the wheel. So that's my role is to be kind of a conduit and kind of a glorified matchmaker, if you will, of, uh, of different companies and uh, different uh, business leaders and decision makers to really understand what the, how they fit in the broader spectrum of what LOHAS is because it means so many different things. It means social justice, it means healthy living, it means sustainable investing, it means clean tech, it means personal development. All of those things are part of LOHAS. We do the matchmaking service uh, through our conference, our magazine, and our website. And primarily through our conference. We have an annual conference that happens in Boulder June 22nd through the 24th. And we also have regional events that will be in New York, LA, Minneapolis, Atlanta, and Denver all in the spring. In the 60s was really kind of the renaissance of the emergence of LOHAS in the U.S. And it was the time of experimentation, it was a time of creativity, expression, all the things that, that are inherent to when people think of the 60s. Music, drugs, sex and rock and roll, all those things were a part of it, but at the same time, that was when the first time that people started, you know, CSAs, Community Sustained Agriculture, co-ops, living in communes. It was actually the first time in the U.S. that people started bringing in Eastern philosophies and taking out the priests from the church and actually having a direct connection with God and spirituality. And that was only 40 years ago. So th those are some pretty profound impacts that had a dramatic effect on how culture has evolved in today. The people who were the teenagers at that time are also the CEOs of Loas companies. So you have the Whole Foods and the Horizon Dairies and the Silk Soy Milks. All of those pe people who were the founders were baby boomers. So they're still inventing and they're taking on what their values were at that time of community, of anti-war, of peace, into the DNA of those companies. And then those companies themselves are affecting other, everyone else that their products go out to. So it's really shifted in terms of the overall consciousness of our society. You know, you see people bringing their grocery bags to the store. It's not an anomaly, and that's kind of a strange thing. You see people taking the bus to work. You see people buying Energy Star appliances. That's just what you do, buying CFL light bulbs, you know, looking at you know, turning off your lights, you know, buying organic, buying local, visiting you know, a farmer's market to buy your food is actually more vogue more you know, popular than actually going to a Albertsons or a Walmart to shop. So I see that in terms of the evolution of understanding our awareness and our impacts we have on others and the greater world, as well as what's going into our bodies, um, is, is, is being elevated.